<laughs> welcome to welcome to our show and i just saw jeff's bum disappearing into the background so i'm sure he'll be back in a second when he's got his bottle of water or something uh, but we are here live with dj jazzy jeff who is uh, currently uh, off camera there he is he's turned up go. he's got, his, he's got his drink <laughs> hello jeff hello People have discovered your uh, people have discovered your little uh, your little icon that we made for you or that you made and we we stole. Uh, so just Neil, good one there. Our, our first I comment of the it. day. That's, that's my guy, just Neil. Jeff, we are, have got you on here today for two reasons. Number one, uh, we have got your twelve rules of DJing, which are featured in DJ Jazzy Jeff's How to DJ Right, which is your course, and that's the second reason because your course. I mean, nine days ago, it's seven, nine days ago, we launched your course. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. And it's, well, you say, I mean, what's the last nine days been like? Amazing. Amazing. Just the amount of comments that I've gotten from people. Um, I think surprisingly, a lot of my friends who, you know, said that they've always wanted to kind of, you know, get a peek behind the curtain to see how I did things, bought the course. And these are these are close friends of mine that probably could have asked me personally these questions, but I don't know if it was too apprehensive to do it, that they just waited for me to come out with a course so that they could take it. So I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. We've been very busy between us all, haven't we? With, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people joining the course and uh, getting everyone in there and getting them all uh, oriented. And people, uh, you know, the biggest comment we see, Jeff, is I've been a fan of Jeff. He's been my favourite DJ. And then they, they, they name some time many years ago. Uh, and I've wanted him to do this for so, so long. And uh, yeah. and it's just great to have done it. So, for, so again, you know... Um, Thank you for being part of it. We, I think we've put, we've made something that's bigger than any of us could have imagined. Um, yes. And that's okay. exciting. But we do need to let people know that before we start going on the teaching today, which is Jeff's 12 rules of DJ, uh, the, the DJ Jazzy Jeff How to DJ Right course is currently on a launch period. And that means you get $100 off, which is, which is a big saving. So you must get it now. At um, the end of uh, today, it, it's gone. So this is the last chance, people. Uh, you need to go to djtips.co. There we go. Uh, slash Jeff. Uh, and then you will be able to watch Jeff talking you through the course, showing you some, some transitions. And you'll be able to read all about it. But more importantly, you'll be able to buy it because that $100 saving disappears in a number of hours. So it really is your last chance now if you've been wanting to get on board this. Uh, we mm -hmm. wouldn't want you to buy the same brilliant course tomorrow, brilliant course, but pay $100 more for it because you're here at the beginning and, that, and that, there's a reward for that. So take, yeah. <laughs> you know, take, uh, take us up on it. Um, so, Jeff, we yeah. want to go through these 12 rules of DJing. Uh, they're in the course. You go into a lot more detail about this in the course and the whole course is built around these rules, but also around an incredible and let me tell you the incredible hour-long mix you made. People are like, that mix is worth the cost of the course alone. Because they get to see yeah. you playing every style, every yeah. trick that's taught, and also every angle. Overhead, yeah. Yeah. front, your serato. I mean, to actually watch oh, yeah. your serato yeah. while you're DJing. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so uh, these rules are part of it all. So we want to share them with you in public. And if you do nothing else, you're going to learn a lot from this next hour. Shall we get started, Jeff? I'm ready. The, I'm ready. The first rule, and the whole set of rules is on digitaldjtips.com. You can go and have a look at these there at any time you want. But the first rule, and we're going to talk about it live, is get to know your music. Rule number one from DJ Jazzy yes. Jeff, get to know your music. Tell us about it. Well, you know, coming, coming from uh, somebody who used to carry records and record crates, it was extremely important to know what was in your crates, you know, knowing the music that you're going to bring out to play for people. You know, there are people that had maybe a 10,000 record record collection that you can't take all 10,000. So you can only take, you know, enough to to rock the party. But it is very important for you to know what's in your crates. And all I all I've done 
is taking that same process and move it over into the digital, you know, uh, uh, area of your crates and now your folders. But you need to know what's in your folders. You need to understand, you know, this song has an eight bar intro. You know, it's a it's an eight bar verse. And then the hook is eight bars like you need to understand the structure and the 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 arrangement of the music that you're playing because then you can do a lot of the mixes and things like that in your head um and almost put together a lot of these mixes without even playing the music because you know your music so well so it's really I'd important you to take your, you know take your computer and sit it on your lap in the bed and play go through your folders and listen to the songs and put cue points on the songs it's almost like the more that you know your music, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that you have better you you have better experiences with songs that you know than songs that you don't. So if you know that, get to know all of your songs. It's really important to pull out the what well, I think the key thing you said there is if you know your music well enough, you can prepare transitions in your head. And That's this it. is the stage that you've got to get to if you want to be fluid like Jeff is. You know, we all watch Jeff DJ and it's fluid. And the reason is he's done all this stuff in his head 10 times for every time he's done it on the decks. And let me tell you people something absolutely frightening. I mean, this is truly frightening. This man, just as a throwaway line, when we were filming the course, he said, you know, some of the mixes I do in my head, only a few of them make it onto the decks. The stuff that goes on here that never comes out. Can you imagine if it all came out, people? Can you imagine? I can't. Uh, so, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so, you know, if we look at the 10% we get, Jesus. So, um, it, no, it's really important. And, and, you know, anything that can help, Bluetooth speakers around the house, having your playlist on your phone that just connects yeah. when you yeah. walk into a room and starts playing, uh, having it in the car. A lot of people don't listen to their own music, right? They buy music and they audition music and they discover new music. And once it goes into the collection, they kind of, they kind of ignore it. And yeah, it's important to not do that. And there, and there, and there are songs that if you get to know, you'll realize, hey, this song is in the same key as this song. And I wonder if I put them together, how would it, you know, you know, how would it blend? Will it, will it match? You know, and, and, and the only way that you get to know that is if you know your music. And that's why, to me, it is so important. You know, so many of the mixes and things that I come up with, I may come up with in the car, just listening to the music. And I'm like, oh, man, like, that's crazy because, you know, he says this and then it's an eight bar break. And then I can start this record and it all seems seamless. But it none of this stuff, like that's probably why this was rule number one. There is nothing more important than you knowing your music. Mm. So the reason for knowing your music, of course, or one of the big reasons is rule number two. And rule number mm -hmm. two is transitions are everything. Transitions are everything. Yes. So over to you on this one, Jeff. Listen, I... Um, I have done events that I played for an hour and I'm watching people's face and they are absolutely exhausted and wanting to leave the floor. But the reason why they can't is they can't tell when one record ends and another one comes in because of the transitions. And that was my job. My job was I want to keep you on the floor. I want to I want to make this an experience that you know, you're waiting because there's a lot of times that people are waiting for a song that they don't like or a break or a wrong transition that knocks their body clock off that makes them go to the bar, that makes them go to the bathroom. And what I try to do is I try to make it to a point that it is seamless, that you don't know when to break it off and go to the bar. And that's really a sign of how important transitions are. You know, a DJ's job is to seamlessly go from one song to another. Or let me just say, one of the DJ's jobs is to seamlessly go from one song to another. And when you can do that, you, that was the first thing that I learned as a DJ. How can I go from this record to this record 
and not make people stop. You know, a radio station plays the record to the end and then they start the new one, which gives people a chance to start dancing, stop dancing. And if they like the next record, they might start dancing again. But if you take their attention away from it, they're going to go somewhere else. But with a very, very good transition, you're keeping people stuck on the dance floor. Jeff, is there also a case for if you are very competent at transitions, you can play a wider variety of music. So you're not looking for a track that will mix well with the track that you're currently playing, which might be boring. But instead, you're saying, what's the right track to play next? And yes. being confident that you know how to transition. So therefore, you're not as constrained by, by, by your, your lack of skills. And, and, and I also think that, you know, and this was a, a, something that I have been saying for a while. The, the gems at the end of the night are not the songs that everybody expects. The gems are the songs that they didn't expect. The gems are the, 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 the surprise that you gave somebody. I got everybody on the dance floor. One of the earliest transitions that I started doing 15, 20 years ago was when I play Eye of the Tiger and then go into uh, uh, Mama Says Knock You Out. But I've dropped Eye of the Tiger and gotten looks at people like, this is a hardcore hip hop party. What are you playing Eye of the Tiger? And then next thing you know, Mama Says Knock You Out comes in and everybody's like, oh my God, that was amazing. And that's what they talked about when they left. When they're walking out the party and slapping high five, saying this was a great night, they're not saying it was a great night because of the Drake record that you played and no disrespect to Drake. They're saying it about the curveball that you played, about the record that I did not expect. So I always encourage, you know, sometimes find that record that people aren't going to expect. Now, it's OK to find the record. The transition makes it work because you can find the record. And if you do it wrong, it's going to be a bad night. If you do it right, that's what they're going to talk about. And that is a big, big part of what this course teaches how to do it right. If you've just joined us, I have DJ Jazzy Jeff with me on today's Thursday Q&A. The reason is that we've launched his DJ course, his long-awaited DJ course. Uh, it's been the biggest thing we've ever done as a company. I think you said it's one of the most important things you've ever done in your yeah. career as well, Jeff. So uh, it's something we're all very proud of. Uh, and it's going away tonight. Uh, oh, no. You won't get the special yeah. offer. You won't get the launch offer that we've put together for it. It will go to full price, what everyone else pays for it. And we don't want that because you're here early and you deserve to get it at the reduced price. I'm not gonna get this right all day, I can tell already. Uh, so djtips.co slash Jeff will get you to the page where you can get that $100 discount on Jeff's course, but you have to do it today. Straight after this live would be the best time so that you don't forget because life gets in the way and then it'll come to tomorrow and you'll think, damn. So. Let's move on to our, and we're going through Jeff's 12 Rules of DJ, which he goes into in a lot more detail in the course, but we're gonna go through them for free here for this hour, and we're proud to have you here, Jeff, so thank you. Number four, have we done, Have we got as far as number four yet? I, I lose count straight, oh no, we well, haven't, yeah, no, no, it's a big one. There's a what big one. What was number one. three? It might number be number three. Number is a big one, yeah, so this is probably, well, once you've got the first two down and you're starting to step in front of your decks, this one is the most important of the lot, so let's do it straight away, and it is. Listen to your body clock. Listen to your body clock. What on earth do you mean by this one, Jeff? Listen, if you have to tap your feet, some people have an internal body clock that they, um, that they kind of can count in their head. There are some people that I know that tap their foot while they're DJing to keep timing. But it's very important the, one of the one of the main things that I've always said about being a good DJ is your timing, having to keep your timing, having to clap your hands on beat mentally inside your head, clapping your hands, keeping the beat to make sure that you can go from one to another and not lose count. We all have an internal body clock. That's the reason why we know when somebody is not on beat and you have to be able to trust your internal body clock you know, and, and going from one record to another 
to kind of keep things on beat counting in your head sometimes what that does is that allows you to bring in records that might not come in on the one if you're counting in your head you kind of know when this record is supposed to come in and you're bringing it in your head before you bring it in with other people it all it is to me is we use headphones to hear what people don't hear to make sure that we're bringing it in right this is us doing it in our head to make sure we bring it in right so it's the exact same thing like you know getting to know your music but you have to be able to trust your body clock you know once you kind of get that down it's very unlikely that you're going to be offbeat and it's an interesting thing isn't it because people think this is difficult djs think this is difficult but you watch any anyone on a podium dancing in a club and they've got a body clock they know what's happening yeah. they know when the big parts yeah. are arriving they know when things are leaving they know when the breakdown comes and they know if the drop is a bar late they might not be able to call it a bar but they know that you just yeah. did something to yeah. add a bit a little bit more before it kicked in it's not yes. something that's alien to us it's just having the confidence to, to trust that tick in your head right that's it that's it it's, um, a, it's an internal metronome the internal metronome. Uh, right, this is uh, number five, and this gets we're starting to get to the heart of what makes you such a, a well-loved DJ, Jeff. And this one is very simple. Uh, it's not about them. So, sorry, <laughs> there's me getting it completely yeah. wrong way around. It's not about you. It's about them. Uh, explain yes. this one. All right, this is a good one because, you know, I know I, a lot of times I have a lot of fans of me doing certain routines, me doing certain scratches. And sometimes you'll get somebody that will come up to a, a an event that everybody is on the floor dancing, having a good time. And they walk up to you and say, hey, Jeff, do the Peter Piper routine. Right routine, wrong place. Like it's understanding who you are playing for. And that's the whole thing. People don't realize that as a DJ, you are a servant of the people. The reason why you got this job as a DJ is to make the people happy on the dance floor. It's not about making you happy. Like you wanna make yourself happy, you throw your own event. But when someone hires you to DJ, your job is to you know you have to know the job my job is to make everybody at this event have a great time and it's about them you know and and listen that's not to say don't give yourself some i realize you know what someone books me to play for an hour and a half i'm going to give you an hour and 20 minutes of you and I'm going to give you 10 minutes of me because that satisfies the people that want to see you do what you do. But it also satisfies the people that came there to have a good time. And a lot of times I see it the other way around. I see DJs that are going for broke to show everybody how great they are. I've seen DJs tell everybody, hey, y'all, stop and check me out. Why are you stopping people from having a good time? Like, it's a little bit different. It's, but understand, I know the shows that, all right, it's time for me to get busy. And I know the shows, it's time for me to make them have a good time. It's really understanding who you are playing for. Because both, both things fit. You just got to know the time. You don't go in a reggae club and play drum and bass. Like, it's knowing who you're playing for. And I think this is the the this is the most important thing in, in getting booked, getting rebooked. Did you do the job? Did you do the job? I don't understand people get upset when it's like, yo, I came into this party, nobody danced. I did the most amazing routines in the world because I'm so dope and I'm trying to figure out why no one is calling me back because no one was dancing. You know, I had a Vegas residency for 20 years that I was in Vegas. And I had people tell me, you know why we bring you back? 
because you keep the dance floor packed. Everybody goes to the bar and they buys drinks and they have a good a good time. Vegas wasn't about me. Vegas was about them. Now you know what? I do the Adidas event, the do over. Sometimes that's about me. Sometimes they want it to be about you. But I pay attention to what I'm doing and who I'm doing it for to make sure that I do the job. You know, and that's why people have to understand, you know, yeah, I, I, I love what I do, but my job is to make you happy. My job is you know, to please the people. Some people have a real problem with this because they say, oh, I got into DJing for music. I've got to play my music. I've got to, and, and you don't have a problem with that, do you, Jeff? It's just like you can't expect to play your music and to get paid and to come back and to play to places where the job was never that in the first place. And as long as you understand that, there's nothing wrong with sitting in your bedroom with, you know, uh, a crate full of 90s, 90s progressive house from London uh, and, and, and having the time of your life. But don't That's expect it. to be able to take that crate, walk into any venue in the world and just do your thing and expect it to work because you're neglecting a big part of what being a successful DJ is about if you are arrogant enough or ignorant enough to think that that's ever going to work. If it won't work for you, Jeff, it certainly ain't going to work for anyone else. So, I mean, that's the key, isn't it? Looking at it like you're, you're a painter or you're a carpenter and you like to make really, really funky furniture. And then somebody comes into your shop and says, you know what, can you make me a round table? And they pay you. You don't turn around and make them a funky table because I think you're going to like this table better than the round table. That's not the job. <laughs> now, if somebody's like, I don't know what I want and I'm leaving it up to you to make me what you think I should have, then you got free reign to do whatever you want. I just don't understand when you under when you know the job. This is a dance club that everybody comes in and they want to dance. And I'm in here trying to do DJ routines because I want to show everybody how great I am. Like, do not fit a round pig in a square hole. Now, Fantastic. where I think people get, I think where people get a little confused is, I just said sometimes throw a curveball. Like that's not fitting a round pig in a square hole. You know, I'm saying throw a curveball, throw throw that unexpected record in that may make people say, oh my goodness, I didn't expect him to do that or didn't expect him to play that. That's not doing a whole DJ routine in the middle of a dance club when everybody is looking like I came here to dance. Jeff, you're far too modest to tell this story, so I'll tell it very quickly. I was talking to your wife when we were over there and she said, when you were DJing the president's birthday party, as you do, um, someone tapped you on the shoulder at a certain point in your set and said, He's losing the floor here. What's he doing? This is a this is strange. And she said, just give him 30 seconds. And it was one of those moments where you drop a total curveball because you know damn well how you're yeah. gonna get out of it. And 30 seconds later, the room goes completely off, more than it has all night. And and Lynette just smiled and said, I told you he knew what he was doing. Uh, it's uh, it's it's an example of that that you're not gonna share, but I'll share it for you. Um, <laughs> listen. Some people are actually watching because there's a stream of people saying, what happened to number four? Uh, and that was a little test to make sure you're watching people. So you all passed. So <laughs> Jeff's number <laughs> Jeff's number four. Uh, DJing is the meal. Scratching is the seasoning. And by the way, before you answer this, if anyone wants to see what we're looking at on the screen, both the uh, there's two articles that cover all these 12 points on the Digital DJ Tips website. You can go and find it afterwards. Um, DJing is the meal, scratching is the seasoning. Uh, and a couple of people in the comments have said, what's different between Jeff's DJ course and any other scratch course? So look, this isn't a scratch course because it's, all, it's in that rule. Scratching is just yeah. the seasoning. DJing is the meal. So your whole course reflects this philosophy, Jeff. So you better share the philosophy so people understand it. Well, you know what I also, I also realized is, you know, I have fr so many friends um, that are incredible DJs that have put out DJ courses to show you how to scratch, how to do certain scratches. I'm going to show you how to do a flare. I'm going to show you how to do a double click flare and, you know, and do certain rubs and things like that. You can't do that for a whole night. Like my my job was, OK, there's not a lot of people out here showing you the structure 
of how to keep a party going. And that's that's what most people hire you for. I'm hiring you for a party. There are very rare occasions with guys such as Qbert who people hire him to scratch all night. People don't hire Qbert to do a party. They hire him because Qbert is a performance DJ. Like so if you're a performance DJ, then you just have to wait for people who want you to just scratch. At the end of the day, it's kind of like making sure that you play the right records, making sure that you do the right transitions and and making sure that the people have a good time is the job. The spice on top is when you can add a little flair in it. The spice on top is you doing certain scratches going from one side to another. The spice might be you break into a quick back and forth routine, maybe just three times back to back, just to show something and then keep it moving. And when the time comes for you to do your thing, you do your thing. But scratching is not the meal. DJing is the meal. DJing is the meat and the potatoes. Scratching is the A1 steak sauce or the Worcestershire sauce and the salt and pepper. And it's just, you don't, I don't know too many people that want A1 steak sauce and salt and pepper and no meat. <laughs> and this is what the people who ask, is this a scratch course, are going to be pleased to hear. Because it isn't. It's Jeff's DJing course. This is the art of DJing. It's about music, about transitions, mm -hmm. about about gear, about uh, how to approach every part of being a DJ, playing different kinds of parties. It's basically everything you know, Jeff, poured into a course. Uh, and scratching is the bit that people see because you're showing off, but it's literally just the seasoning on top of everything else. And the course reflects that, people. Uh, so um, a few people agreeing there uh, with that one, Jeff. Um, we're gonna we're gonna push on and grab the next one, which is uh, which is great because it kind of plays into this idea of, of the DJ as a show off while also doing the job. Make sure the audience knows what you're doing. This is a key one, I think. So tell us what this is. Uh, tell us what this is uh, helping people with, Jeff. Well, you know what's funny is I had the pleasure of judging a lot of the DJ competitions from the DMC, Red Bull 3 style. There were times that I would watch DJs do the most incredible routine, but they're doing it off of a record that no one knows. From a technical aspect, I see what they're doing. From a musical aspect, I don't know. Because if I don't know how this record goes, I don't know how you changed it. The biggest DJ routines kind of came from people doing routines off of records that people know. Because that way you can tell how they flipped it. How th it's almost kind of like you doing a remix off of a record that no one knows. If they don't know the original, they don't know what you did in the remix. It only makes sense when you remix something that people know. So I've always found you it's, it's important to let the people know kind of what you're doing so that they know how you're changing what you're doing. You know, and I've seen a bunch of people that have done amazing DJ routines off of records that they don't know. And I've watched people not react. And it has more to do because they don't understand the record that you're using. So, so much about you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to do this course is because I think people think that you just get up and play records and they don't understand the mental part that goes through this. They don't understand the thought process that goes through this. It's kind of like, OK, why, there's a reason why you're playing every record. There's a reason why you're playing every record when you're playing every record. There's a reason why you pick these records to do DJ routines off of, you know, all of this stuff you're not just winging it you're you, there's there's a method to the madness and i really wanted to kind of explain the method to the madness there's a reason why you know me cutting peter piper was 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 so important because everyone knew peter piper everyone knows rock the bells you know everyone knows the records that you're doing these routines off of because they understand how you're changing it 
So it's just it's just very, very important to, you know, keep the audience abreast of what you're doing. And that 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 just goes back to the 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 rule before this of understanding the fact that it's about them. It's about them. As a DJ, you have listen, I can call, you know, and some people saw for my birthday, you know, Shortcut came down, Scratch Bastard came down, you know, Terry Hunter came down. And we had times that we got in here and all we did is cut and scratch because we were doing it for the people that wanted to see us cut and scratch. But all weekend long, it was a party. So there's times for you to be able to do everything that you want. You just have to know what those times are. You know, you just can't get in the middle of a Friday night party where everybody is dancing and having a good time and turn it into a scratch session. Might not be the right time. That's a recipe for uh, that's a recipe for what we were talking about earlier, which is just misreading your crowd, isn't it? So uh, the, the the number seven in your list, we're counting through Jeff's 12 rules of DJing. And if you like what you're seeing, uh, his course is 100 off. I'm never going to get it right. It's just not going to happen today. It's 100 off at the moment. That's the link you want. DJ, uh, djtips.co slash Jeff. If you want to get on board DJ Jazzy Jeff's first ever DJ course, How to DJ Right. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of people have. And if you're in this conversation, if you're in the chat, if you're watching this and you bought the course, tell us what you think about it so far. We'll put a few of the best comments on the screen. Uh, but number seven in, in the 12 rules of DJing, which are covered in the course in much more detail than this, uh, but we're giving them to, to you for free now, uh, is uh, every DJ set needs a takeoff a flight and a landing Jeff yes um, it is very important for you to find out how long are you DJing you know that's the first question I want to know you know how long is the set okay Jeff we need you to play for an hour which means I need to be able to start the set I needed to have a, a, a almost like the juicy part of the set and then I need to be able to land it. You don't ever want to stop your set on the biggest record of the night. You don't ever want to start your set with the biggest record of the night. You know, the biggest record of the night needs to be somewhere in the middle or right before, okay, I got to I gotta send them to the bar. I got to end the party. The party is getting ready to go. Like, there's a lot of DJs that understand, and especially if you're, if you're an older DJ, at the end of the night, a lot of DJs used to play slow records. And that was because they're going to turn the lights on. Everybody's going to go get their coat. And this is a great way to let everybody go. But, you know, it, it's, that was an ending. So to me, it has always been important for me to sit and say, okay, this is how I want to start. This is going to be the, 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 the flight. This is now we're in the air. We're in the air and we're just cruising. And when it comes time to land, I am trying to land it to the point that everyone walks out or walks to the next DJ to, to and, and that's a whole other thing that you want the night to be good. As a, as a DJ's job, you really want the night to be a good night. It is not a good night if you kill it and the DJ after you sucks. It's not a good night. So sometimes you want to set the DJ up after you. Like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to set him up. And I've been in clubs that some DJs try to play every good record possible, thinking that's how they're going to kill it. And they're, they're rushing to play everything before you get on, you know. And it's kind of like that's, that doesn't make a good night. And, and a, 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 a huge part of this is the whole night needs to be good, not just your portion, you know, and sometimes the setup. I've had nights that I was about to do a set and the opening DJ played such a good set, I picked up off of what he was doing and kept it going. That it's kind of like, oh my God, like you got him rocking. Let me just grab what you're doing and we're gonna keep this going and then I'm gonna pass it off like a baton to the person behind me because that makes a great night. That makes everybody leave and say, oh my God, this was so great, you know? 
and not just I want to blow everybody off the stage. That's not a good night. That's a good night for you. It's a classic, isn't it, Jeff? The, you know, the warm-up DJ who goes a bit crazy is, is, is the kind of cliche about all of this. But it's more than that, as you've just pointed out. It's not only uh, making sure that, you, that the night has a good beginning, middle and end, but that when you, when you are on the decks and you, you realise what your part of the night is about, it's about making yeah. sure your set has that progression as well. And we go into so much detail about how to do this in the course. In the course, you get an hour-long mix called the Inspiration Mix, where Jeff does an hour set but we've got his serato we've got his overheads we've got close-ups so you can not only see the tracks he's playing and what he's doing but you can hear how he develops the set from beginning to middle to end and it also answers another question a lot of people are asking which is is this course good for insert kind of music here honestly in that set you're going to see everything you're going to see jeff's hip-hop flavor you're going to see salsa you're going to see rock you're going to see disco and bit of house and downbeat r&b it's got the lot in it even yacht rock literally it's it. it goes everywhere uh, it's a it's a wonderful mix in itself it's called the inspiration mix and you'll find it when you when you get on board uh, and the course is currently at the offer price but it won't be for more than a few hours more this is the end of the offer week people so if you're loving what you're hearing from jeff here if jeff's your favorite dj and you want some more it's the upside down bit i'm getting wrong now i'm getting the angle right uh, there's your link djtips.com yeah you, you've nailed it right jeff. here <laughs> you've nailed it there you go that's what i'll do you've nailed it um so uh so get on board people because it's not going to be there for too much longer uh, in fact hours uh right the next rule in jeff's 12 rules of dj be bold be bold and by the way if you're looking at this stuff on the screen and thinking where's this from it's from digital dj tips and you can see these articles on the website so be bold jeff you have to be willing to take a chance listen as a, as a DJ, we all have the same records. And sometimes people come in and they want to play the exact same thing. One of the things that has always bothered me is you have to understand that there are people that get dressed to the radio, they drive to the club listening to the radio, and they walk in the club and they expect you to do the exact same thing that the radio is doing. As a DJ... What your job is, your job is to make it about them first, but you need to understand that you know more about music than they do. You, that's the reason why you have the job as a DJ. So sometimes you have to take people on trips that they don't even know that they're going on, but you have to be bold. Sometimes you are going to play this record that they're not going to understand the first time that somebody played a Beyonce record might have cleared the floor until the record caught on and then everybody loves it. You have to be that person to be bold and break music. I grew up with, and that's what a DJ's job was. I would go in a record store and they would play some music and I would listen and say, wow, that's great. And I would buy it. And I would play it. And sometimes people were kind of looking at you like, I don't understand what this is. And you're like, okay, wait about three weeks. And then next thing you know, it's the biggest record in the world. But they, and they understand that you were the one that educated them about that record. You know, sometimes you, you have to, you have to be bold. Now being bold doesn't mean like, yo, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind. If you look at this from a life perspective and there's a lion outside and you got to go get your mail, being bold isn't just saying, I'm just going to walk out and grab the mail. Being bold and being smart is I'm going to throw a piece of steak over here, let the lion roll over here, and then I'm going to go get the mail. It's being smart while being bold. Being smart while being bold. That is a... Uh... That is the key, uh, and that is the, the the line you walk that is uh, that is built on very very much in the in the course. And Jeff gives you the tools yes. to be able to do that. It's easy to say, but obviously a bit harder to do. And that's that's one of the things that's at the heart of, of what's taught in DJ Jazzy Jeff's how to DJ right. We're talking about that today, uh, and we are going through his twelve rules of DJing, which are 
got into in a lot more detail in the course. The course is based around everything that you're hearing from the man himself here. And number nine is collaboration, not mm. isolation. Collaboration, not isolation. Sounds like a rap lyric. Uh, yeah. Jeff, collaboration, <laughs> not isolation. Tell us. Listen, D DJ and DJ and, and music in general is not a solo job. It's not, it's, you know, this is, this, this is something that's very, very important to me because I know DJs that don't collaborate with other DJs. They are isolated. I'm the greatest. I don't want, you know, to have DJ friends. The cliche that iron sharpens iron. I want to be around as, as many amazing DJs as I possibly can because I learn something every day. You are never going to get to a point that you know everything. You need to pay attention to the seasoned DJ as well as that brand new DJ that you've never heard. They might play a record that you don't know. You know, they may do, do a style that you haven't seen or heard before. They may play a record that you haven't played in a long time that you need to kind of re reoccur and bring back out you know, because it sounds good. It fits great for today. That's why, to me, collaborating with other DJs or other creatives, you know, to share ideas, share styles, you know, uh, uh, share techniques is very, very important. It's, it's, it's about collaborating with other people. You know, most of us grew up listening to classic music that was all done by a band. It was, you know, it wasn't Earth, Wind and Fire didn't have one member. It was a band. They all played instruments, but they it was a band that collectively made up a group. And it's kind of the same thing. It's, it's, you know, we look at it now and there's so many people that are either making music or playing music solely by themselves. And that's not a bad thing to do sometimes. I just think that it's very, very important to find people that you vibe with musically and collaborate, you know, and that's the beauty. You know, that was the thing that I really loved, you know, about Twitch, you know, finding out, you know, about StreamYard and Restream that allows DJs in two different places to kind of play, you know, off of each other, you know, and that became something that in this crazy world that we're living in now, we were able to do collaboration sets with people and not necessarily be in the same place. You know, if I look back to my early DJ years, I remember some of my most fun times were taking a box of records round to a mate's house, down into the cellar where the decks were set up and just spending the night. Oh, you got me with that one. What was that? What was that? Yeah. You know, the, and to me, it was the, the buzz was when I could get that friend of mine to actually you know swallow humble pie and walk over to me and say what was that it, it was brilliant you know what i mean <laughs> and and that that collaboration but of course where you come from jeff there was no such thing as djing on your own you were automatically part of a crew at the beginning of yes. hip-hop because you were yes. working with an mc and you were also yep. part of a bigger organization because you couldn't put a block party on on your own you needed an organization yeah. behind you you needed your gang and so the idea of djing on your own is to some people alien like you but to others, it isn't. To others, you know, you want to be a DJ and you're immediately the only person in your school or in your town that's into this weird music. So it's about finding those people as quickly as you can, right? That's it. That is it. That cool. is it. All right. So let's move on now to your 10th. Uh, of 12 rules of DJing. I hope you're enjoying these people. Do hit those usual social media uh, shows of appreciation, whichever platform you're on. We're on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and our Facebook student group as well today. Uh, we'd love to see you uh, see you doing that. Uh, this is know your audience. Jeff's 10th rule is know your audience. And you've actually covered this quite well in some of the stuff you were talking about earlier, Jeff, but let's just isolate it and talk about it on its own for a second. Um, I just think, you know, that really comes down to, you know, if if you're if you're at the point that someone is hiring you to do something, what is the job that they want you to do? What is the thing that your audience is expecting that night? Like, you know, I, I keep going back to this is a dance club that everybody is on the floor 
dancing. Tonight might be about them dancing and not about you doing DJ routines. That, you know, it is as simple as that. It's, you know, once again, you know, and I think I put it, you know, in the rule, if you have a hot dog stand that everybody's coming, you can't say, well, we don't have any hot dogs. I'm selling chicken now because I came to you for what, I, what I'm expecting and not for what you're trying to give me. It's just understanding and knowing your audience because sometimes your audience is the audience that wants you to do you, which is beautiful. You know, you find that a lot on Twitch that, you know, sometimes people are like, Jeff, I'm here for you to take me on a trip. That's great. But if somebody is kind of like, yeah, you know, tonight, we're doing all slow jams and I start playing Mob Deep. That's not knowing your audience. There you go. There you got it right there. It's uh, It comes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's not about you. It's about uh, them, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, We are only here for another 10 minutes, Jeff, and there's lots of people asking questions and stuff. So I do want to get to the end of this list. So we'll maybe just have five minutes to chat at the end uh, before Listen, we have to go. It- we can stay a little bit longer and answer some questions. Well, it's brilliant to say that. Normally, out of politeness, we don't do that because I know a lot of people dive in on their lunch break for this because it's a scheduled show and yeah. stuff. But I'm sure just this once, the audience will uh, will be quite happy to hang around a little bit longer and answer questions. So uh, I think we'll probably take you up on that one and break a, break a rule there. Um, so um, the next one then uh, is, uh, this is one that might surprise people from a, from a DJ who's, uh, they might think he's just a turntable and mixer kind of guy and that's kind of where you, where you stop. Uh, embrace technology. Embrace technology is your rule number 11. Um, so mm-hmm. what do you mean by this one? Um, I am someone who I grew up DJing off of turntables and a mixer. Um, once again, knowing who you're playing for. And what, what, what happened with me, I had someone tell me, and I'm somebody that a lot of times, when I hear certain nuggets, I'll grab it and I will never let that go. And I had someone tell me that if you're doing a festival for 10,000 people, 500 of them can see what you are doing. That means 9,500 people are only listening. And you know what that means? I don't care if you're using turntables. I don't care if you're using CDJs. I don't care if you're using a controller. The music is the most important thing. I see a lot of the diehards that come down on people that are using CDJs, that are using controllers. At the end of the day, that is what we use to get the music out there. The music is the most important thing. I don't know if I've ever had someone walk out of the club because you were using a piece of equipment. The, you're, you're coming for the music. Like you need to embrace technology. You know, I went through this when Serato first came out. You know, it, it went around, Jeff is using a computer. Oh my God, how dare him use a computer until someone came and watched me use the computer and realized wow he's doing the same thing he did with records with a computer like at the end of the day it's still about the music we do not care what kind of hammer the mechanic uses as long as he fixes the car (laughs) it it's kind of when you put it like that it makes sense but i think people do feel when they turn up with whatever gear they've got and put it down there's a feeling of, are people going to be laughing at me here? You know, But I think another thing, to if you are a DJ that's worried about what you use and worried about the perception you give, generally, it only, you know, it's, like, um, it's like a singer who doesn't look the part until they open their mouth, right? And then it all falls away because they're great. Yes, and it. it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. As soon, you know, by, your, by, your, by, by 10 minutes into your set, if you know what you're doing, no one's going to care what equipment you're using. And in fact, they might, you know, they might actually be even more respectful of you because they thought you couldn't do what you just did on what you were doing on. Uh, so uh, the, the rule is, is to be... And, and I want to say this. This is the funny part. We're only talking to the 500 people that can see what you're doing. We're not even talking to majority of the people that are there 
for their ears. A, a, a huge, a huge lesson. Play like everybody is blind. Play like everybody in the club is blind. Play for their ears, not their eyes. Solid goal, people. Are we giving you value today or what? And if you do like this, there's a course. There's a course where it's not an hour of Jeff. It is literally 80 lessons plus all the teaching aids you need to actually put everything you're hearing now into practice, to learn everything that this man here has achieved and how he's done it. Uh, and you can find out more about that course there. And it's only for this week on a special launch offer, which ends tonight. So please, 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 if you've been inspired, go and take a look on that URL. It will take you to a page where Jeff talks you through in more detail what's in this course. Uh, the course is yours for life. You can take it whenever you want. You don't have to start it now, but you'll get it now at $100 less than you'll pay for it tomorrow. So now is the time, people, and that is your link, djtips.co slash Jeff. It's also in the comments on whichever platform you're on. Jeff, we've reached your final uh, your final rule, and this is the one that actually gives me goosebumps because when I realized this personally many years ago, I suddenly realized that this DJing thing doesn't have an end to it. Uh, and it was DJing is bigger than the club. DJing is bigger than the club. Over to you. Um, I had a revelation you know, during the entire COVID thing. Um, my first one was one night I, you know, my, my wife and I turned Twitch on and we were like, hey, and I was joking. I was like, hey, let's go to the club tonight and turn Twitch on and turned on Rich Medina and Rich Medina was playing Afrobeat and me and my wife danced and had a good time. And then I turned the channel and Natasha Diggs was on Soul in the Horn and she's playing classics and she's dancing and we're having a good time. And then I turned on and Shortcut and Just Blaze were doing a back-to-back -back house set. And I stopped and I looked at my wife and I said, oh my God, this is the best club I've ever been to. Like I'm going from room to room watching world-class DJs do their thing in the comforts of my home and i realized but this was all different kinds of music whatever i wanted and whenever i wanted it was there like that was an extreme that that was something that really resonated the second thing i'll say is i had someone come on early on the stream and said jeff you know I'm excited to see you play. This is my first time seeing you play and I'm a huge fan. And I kind of chuckled to myself because it was kind of like, you know, you're a huge fan, but this is the first time you've seen me play. And he said, I graduated high school. I went into the military. I got married and I had four year, four, four kids. My lifestyle is not conducive to a club. And that rang in my head. My lifestyle is not conducive to a club. And what I started to think, if I am trying to hear a really, really good DJ, the only place I felt like I could hear them was in a club. What if your lifestyle wasn't conducive to a club? What if you just, I just don't like going to clubs, but I still like good DJs. I still like good music. I don't have a place to hear them. And lo and behold the pandemic hit and lo and behold dj start djing on all of these virtual platforms playing all of this great music and bringing it into their homes and i started to say wow this is amazing wait a minute it's more people wanting to hear music in their homes than hearing it in the club so that's not to say i don't ever want to go back in the club but I think people need to understand that streaming, streaming music, DJing on places like Twitch and things like that is never going away. Because now, you know what I've realized? Magnificent House Party.
There's some people that dance. There's some people that play cards. There's some people that skate. There's some people that clean their garage. They are still enjoying a great DJ set, but they are doing whatever they want. You don't get that in the club. So you need to understand that the club is a very small portion of DJing. The club is a place. There's a lot of places you can DJ that that is not the club. The Magnificent House Party and also um, will you do two two sets regularly every week now, don't you, Jeff? You've got your um, your, lunch, your lunchtime uh, set and your weekend lunch, set. Right? Uh, these two are, if you haven't watched any of these people, if you're, if you're someone who's late to live streaming and DJ live streaming, just go take a look because you'll see what this is all about and what Jeff's talking about. And the beauty of this is that it means that if you are, for whatever reason, someone who doesn't want to DJ in clubs anymore, you might have a young family. You might have moved to somewhere where it's hard to get to the club. Or you might just mm -hmm. not be able to get gigs. Or the music you play is not the kind of music they want to hear where you live. You can now find an outlet in a way that you couldn't even... Three or four years ago, it wasn't as mainstream. Yes. It wasn't as accessible as it is now. And so Jeff in the course talks about playing every kind of gig. There's a whole section of the course where he talks about performing and he talks about playing club gigs, playing battles, playing um, live streams, playing corporate gigs, playing weddings, playing parties. So whatever it is that you want to uh, do with the new skills you learn, he's got your back and he'll talk to you about kind of the, the, way, the way it works. Um, we've talked through Jeff's 12 rules of DJ now and if you would like to uh, catch up on these rules you don't have to buy his course you can just head over to the Digital DJ Tips website and you'll find two articles there uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff's 12 things DJing has taught me parts one and part two and you can catch up on all, the, all of these there you can also catch up on the uh, the live stream itself by just watching it again on uh, the platform you're watching it on now. Um, but if you are inspired uh, and head over to the Digital DJ Tips website or, or use the short code we've been giving out, just find this page here, this, this advert here, click through to it and it'll take you to the page that tells you uh, all about the course. And as you can see, there's literally hours left on it now before it closes. Uh, so go head over there, you save $100, Jeff tells you all about it. There's a video where he shows you some skills. There's a whole career curriculum on there. Uh, there is uh, info about the inspiration mix and about who it's for and how it works. So if you're interested in taking online training with the magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff, and it's something that uh, that we've kind of like uh, fired up in you in the last hour, uh, you have got a few hours left now to go and take a look and to make your decision and jump on board. We'd love to have you on board. Biggest thing That's we've right. done at Digital DJ Tips in 11 years, Jeff. Uh, and, um, and uh, you know, it's just something that's taken off in the last week. Uh, and we do want to get this out as far and wide as we can. Uh, so what do you yes. think, people? Are you, are you going to be jumping on board the course? Let us know okay. in the comments. Uh, and also, any questions you might have for Jeff about this course, uh, now is the time. We're going to hang on for another 10 or 15 minutes, uh, and we're mm -hmm. going to, uh, we're going to uh, answer as many of those as we can, uh, of which I'm sure there'll be far too many. Uh, one of the ones that is coming up over and over again, Jeff, is um, I play this kind of music, and it, this kind of music is not hip-hop. Will this course mm -hmm. still be suitable for me? So answer that one for us. This course is not music uh, genre geared. This course is for whatever kind of music you want to play. Like it does not matter. Your music is your music. I'm just trying to give you some rules and tips of how to organize your music, how to learn your music, how to present your music to the people that like the music that you play. Um, and this isn't just for someone trying to be the biggest club DJ. Sometimes people have hobbies. Not everybody who shoots a basketball is going to the NBA. Sometimes you just want to put up a, ho a hoop and shoot some baskets in your yard. So it's the same thing. You know, sometimes, hey, I know a lot of people that love music. I know a lot of people that collect music. Sometimes you may just want to buy yourself a controller, some turntables, and play music for your friends. And this course shows you how to do it right. Cool. So thanks for sharing that, Jeff. Uh, and I, you know, I can second that because we, we we made sure right from the very beginning that this course was going to be for everyone. Uh, because let's face it, this man's skills uh, are something that 
shouldn't be contained in any genre or in any in, in any pit time period or whatever. These are universal, um, and I think you proved that over your career, Jeff. To, to the point where no one can question it. Um, so uh, a few people asking if we can extend the the, the course. <laughs> you know, the trouble is these things have to stop. So you, you so figure it out, people. Um, Greg says, I'm jumping on. I just have to get the money from my wife. Any message for Greg's wife, uh, Jeff? <laughs> Listen, hey, Greg, you know what you do? Is you and your wife should take the course because think about a husband and wife DJ team might be kind of fly. Well, wow, there we go. There's something to approach her with. Uh, DJ DC, is this only for new DJs or will it benefit 10 to 15 year experience club DJs? Jeff. Listen, I, w one of the things that I wanted to do, and I am somebody, I do not believe in holding things. Like I am not somebody that I don't give away music. I don't, you know, like the music is only a part of it. So it's kind of the same thing. I gave away everything that I know in this course. It wasn't something that I held back. Oh, I don't want to show people that because that's my secret. It, it's, it's no secret. It's no secret. Guess what? When you buy a cookbook, we all got the same recipes. How you make the meal is how you make it. And it's going to be different than how I make it, even though we have the same instructions. So I felt it be very important for you to give every ounce of what you do. I didn't hold anything back. I didn't hide anything. There's no secret like, oh, I didn't want to tell everybody that I do this to help them. The more great DJs we have in the world, the more great parties we have in the, more, in the world, and the more great DJs are going to work. This is not about me. This is about everybody. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm, and the reason I looked a little bit distracted then, Jeff, is it's just gone like, uh, like you know, the stock exchange on the uh, on the questions. There's so many, and I'm just trying to make sure that I put a little mark on the good ones, or rather on, on the ones that I think will help the most people, just so that we don't miss any of them out. And um, this is a, it's not funny, but it's, uh, it made me smile. Is this course strong <laughs> enough to bring a retired DJ out of retirement, says Ro Power? Uh -huh. You know what, Ro there was a... There was a DJ in the course who said, uh, I've been retired for 18 years. Uh, I saw this course, bought it, and I've now gone and spent $4,000 on DJ equipment so I can take the course. So I think you've got an answer there, Ro. Um, um, Jeff making food analogies is making me hungry, says the ruckus. So there, Listen, <laughs> there we go. Listen, a lot of times that is the way that people understand it. If you pr present it in, 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 in a language that people understand, everybody loves food. Everybody knows food. So you kind of understand what I'm trying to say when I kind of make it a chicken and waffle reference. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And so I'm joking saying is because, first of all, Ro Paris isn't a retired DJ. He likes to say he's a retired DJ. Ro Parrish has multiple jobs, and one of them is a DJ. So let me correct Ro Parrish on that. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Uh, I, again, being a... Uh, being humble in the face of, uh, of one of the greats, I think probably there. Um, so um, um, a few people are just asking a bit, you know, because some people don't know how this, this kind of thing works. So let me just explain that to you. The way these courses work is very simple. You buy the course and it costs you a single price. At the moment, it's $100 off the normal price. So do go take a look at the link. Uh, you, so you pay one fee and you own the course. The beauty of it is the course is yours for life. And we mean life. We're here, we've been here for 11 years. We're going to be here for the next 11 years. The course is yours for life. And that means you can take it when you want. You can pick it up, put it down. You can bookmark lessons. You can get back to your busy life, get back to your course at midnight in two months time, whatever. The beauty of it is that the tutors are in the course here at Digital DJ Tips to help you anytime you want. Uh, and we have got a direct line to Jeff for anything we can't answer. Don't worry, you will get that answer. But also uh, there's live training every month in the Digital DJ Tips platform. So yes, you can talk live to tutors. You can meet other students. Uh, and there's a Facebook group with about, I always get this wrong. I think it's got 6,000 uh, current students in it uh, across all our courses to help you as well. So you're joining a community. You're not, you're not buying a login for a few videos videos that are set to private on YouTube. You know, it couldn't be different to that. You're buying you're, you're buying a lifetime access to a community that can be there for you for as long as you want to do this. So that's kind of how it works, um, just to answer that question. 
so um, this uh, is something which I'm going to share because it's absolutely true because some people are like I want to do this but I can't do it now um, you know uh, and, and the truth is that we do have sales uh, and this will be in our sales in the future. So we have a Thanksgiving sale, for instance. Uh, but look, who wants to wait till November? Who wants yeah. to wait till November? Come on, people. Um, instead of going out for a night this month and uh, you know blowing it in a restaurant, blow it on a course that will change your life. Um, Code Kodjo says, I've been a DJ for 40 years, but I've never mastered scratching. Does the course cover scratching? Jeff? It covers some. It covers some. It, 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 um... It definitely shows you the basics and a few specialty items, um, but this is not a scratch course per se. There no. is scratching in the course. This is a DJ course that has scratching in it. It's it's it's, it's really important to say that because at the same yeah. time, it's important to say that if you have never scratched before ever. Um, you know, Jeff is not there to say your hand goes there, this goes there and all this. But we've put lessons in there from our scratch course. We have a very popular scratch course. Yes. Um, and we've put the we have put the foundation module lessons in there from that course. So if you've never done it before, you will be able to follow along with that to get to the point where you can do the four big scratches that Jeff uses 80% of the time in his DJ, which is great yep. because it means that you get that extra help. Uh, and if you don't need that help, it's not going to clutter up your course. You, you know, you just won't go to that bonus section and find it. Um, and Mark, thank you for pointing that out. I'll, you know, Jeff, our community, they do half the job for us in the I comments. Love it. But I love it. at this, this point in a live stream, I'm just watching people tagging each other in the comments, helping each other out. Uh, and there's nothing, uh, you know, there's nothing, uh, nothing more for us to add. Um, so Laurie says, if you're new to digital DJ tips, there are courses galore. The catalog is very deep. But look, it's the Jeff one we're deep. talking about now. But very thank you deep. for that. Thank you for that. Uh, the course is lit, folks. Get your wallets out, says Big Daz. <laughs> thank you for that, Daz. Um, so uh, I think we'll probably, um, we're probably going to leave it there because um, the questions that are being asked are kind of the same thing over and over again. We've answered them, people. So if you haven't had an answer to what you want, that will help you to decide if this is right for you. Watch the replay of the course or just scroll up through the comments on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, uh, and you'll, you'll, see, you'll see someone answering that for you. Uh, Jeff? We have got literally, I mean, it was on the screen then. We've got literally 16 hours and 50 minutes left. I think it's 1 a.m. Friday morning Pacific time that this is going to close. Wow. Um, we have to have, we have to set this time right for, you know, we, we have all the, the, the boffins who tell us the right time to close to make sure everyone gets a chance to, to grab it in its final hours. Uh, this course is the biggest thing we've ever done at Digital DJ Tips. It's the only course this man has ever done. Um, we're all very proud of it. We'd love you to get on board if you, if, DJ Jazzy Jeff is your favorite DJ and you've been waiting for him to make DJ training. He's done it. Uh, and it's currently $100 off if you go to that link now. See that, Jeff? First time. Almost. There we go. Uh, any closing word from you, Jeff, before we let people jog on their way and uh, get on with their days? Listen, I super duper appreciate, um, you know, all of the people that are jumping on, buying this from you know, the brand new DJs to the seasoned DJs, there's something in this for everybody. Um, I absolutely, you know, appreciate everybody that comes on the live streams. The Magma family is something amazing, you know, that we've created. You know, we get together every week and we play good music. You know, we have special guests. You know, I, I've never had this much fun uh, DJing in my life. And I appreciate all of the Mag Mob family because they are definitely responsible for that. If you don't know what that is, you need to come over to uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff's website, sign up for the Mag Mob. We have, you know, we, we, we have a good time. We have a good time. And especially in a world where it's a little crazy right now, we need to have a good time. We all need to get together and, and, and help each other. You know, that's, that's, that's something that we all need. If, if, you are stuck in the house and you are going stir crazy. Maybe this and hopefully this DJ course is something to give you to do that can add some joy and some spice in your life. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I will see you Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Magnificent yeah, House Party. Stream on Saturday. Magnificent House Party, him. 3 p.m. I think we are going to do a tribute to the great Jay Dilla. So anybody who knows anything about Jay Dilla, 
is a fan of Jay Dilla. It's his birthday coming up, and we do this every year. Um, and we're gonna have a good time. So I cool. appreciate well, it. You for that. see so many of my Magma family in the room. Um, and I'll see you Saturday. Thank you, Jeff. And good news to end on. Greg says, I'm jumping on and my wife is included. So there we go. Nick. Fantastic. Jeff, thank you very much. Remember, people, this course is only on sale for another 16 hours, 47 minutes and 54 seconds as we count down uh, at the uh, reduced launch price. We don't want you to pay $100 more tomorrow. We want you to buy it now at this price. So head to djtips.co slash Jeff uh, and get on board DJ Jazzy Jeff's how to DJ right while you still can in this incredible, incredible launch week. It's uh, It's been amazing. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us today. Till next Thank time. You. Take care, Absolutely. man. Absolutely.